I am an African. I owe my being to the hills and the valleys, the mountains and the glades, the rivers, the deserts, the trees, the flowers, the seas, and the ever-changing seasons that define the face of our native land. My body has frozen in our frosts and in our latter-day snows. It has thawed in the warmth of our sunshine and melted in the heat of the midday sun. The crack and the rumble of the summer thunders, lashed by startling lightning, have been a cause both of trembling and of hope. The fragrances of nature have been as pleasant to us as the sight of the wild blooms of the citizens of the felt. The dramatic shapes of the dragon's back, the soil-colored waters of the Ligua, Ikreli, Notugel, and the sands of the Kharahad have all been panels of the set on the natural stage on which we act out the foolish deeds of the theater of the day. At times, and in fear, I have wondered whether I should concede equal citizenship of our country to the leopard and the lion, the elephant and the springbok, the hyena, the black mamba, and the pestilential mosquito. A human presence among all of these, a feature on the face of our native land just defined, I know that none dare challenge me when I say I am an African. I am the grandchild of the warrior men and women that in Zanzi Kukuni land. Patriots at Tetrayon and Pepu took to battle. The soldiers Mushweshwe and Gungunyane taught never to dishonor the cause of freedom. I am the child of Nongaose. I am he who made it possible to trade in the world markets in diamonds, in gold, in the same food for which our stomachs yearn. Being part of all of these people, and in the knowledge that none dares contest that assertion, I shall claim that I'm an African. Today, it feels good to be an African.